I am Vicki Taylor and I am the new owner of this amazing Riverside Inn in Norland, Ontario in the Kawartha Lakes. When I say new, we've actually been here for two years, but in a small town, you're only new, well, you are new for the first 20 years. And when I say we, I mean my husband and my son and I, and those are those guys over there, wave gentlemen. That's my husband, Mike, and my son, Aloysius, and my dog, Mick. And uh, they're more camera shy than I am, so you're stuck with me for the afternoon. And when I say Norland, well, this is it. It's a little tiny town of about 320 people. And it's us. It's us. Down the street is the Norland Food Market, the convenience store. There's a library down the street there. And about a kilometer down, we've got a gas station and my favorite store in the whole wide world, a zebra of a different stripe. When we go inside, you'll notice all the cute, cool things. They're all from there, and I insist that you go. When we took over, we actually took over on January 5th, 2020, which was the fifth round of COVID shutdowns. So we were closed the day that we opened and we did take out for the first month and then 50% capacity for the next. But that didn't stop any of the locals and regulars from dropping by and welcoming us and introducing themselves, which was a bit of a challenge since they were all wearing masks and winter hats. So recognizing them the second time was a little bit tough, uh, but they were wonderful from the beginning. In fact, one lady, a lovely lady named Terry, stopped by one day, not to pick up food, but just to come and drop, drop me off a birthday card and I'd been here for about two and a half weeks. So that's who we are and where we are and why don't you come on inside. But the best part of our introduction to the community was meeting our staff. I've worked in this industry for over 30 years and I can honestly say that this is the most hardworking, dedicated, kind and crazy team I've ever worked with. They got us through the first winter very easily, totally adopted us and got us through snow blowers and sub pump stoppages and blackouts and all of that and they did it with a lot of laughter. They've been so kind and such a great part of our introduction. So why don't I introduce you to a couple of them. So this is Sheila, she's our head cook. She has the biggest heart that you've ever met in anyone and she has the raunchiest jokes that I've ever heard in my life and I have heard a lot. <laughs> she's usually in the kitchen, but you'll have to come by in person if you want to hear. She does, is known to come outside and greet the guests with any new jokes that she has. We've got Nancy here, and she's the matriarch of the group. That's my nice way of saying she's the oldest and the bossiest. <laughs> Nancy is a fanatic for cleaning and organization, but the, most thing, the thing that she loves most in the world is dancing and laughing, and we do a lot of that here. I have video proof. <laughs> And finally, we have our Jo. Jo's been here the longest. She's been here actually since the beginning with the previous owners from day one. And she's a font of obscure knowledge. She knows every weird book, movie, and weird trivia information that you've ever had. She says she's the quiet one, but she's usually in with guffawing with the rest of them. And sometimes you'll find her in the kitchen with Sheila. They actually work together for the last couple of decades in a whole yeah. bunch of different places in the area. They know everything about the space. So I thought we'd ask them more about the area because they're the locals. So Nancy, what do you think is the most unique thing about the Riverside? Well, I've worked a lot of places and for a lot of other employers and the one thing that I noticed here the most was how appreciated we were with thank yous and whatever. And then also we're such a different group of people, like personalities, where we've lived, where we've, what we've done, and we all get along so well. And it's fun to come to work. Yeah, it is fun. And mm -hmm. uh, when she says unique, it's absolutely the truth. I've never met such a diverse group of people that are that get along so well. And the great thing I think is the front of house servers and the back of house kitchen are one team. We laugh together. We work together. No one blames anything ever. We do the dishes. She comes out and entertains the guests. So <laughs> every, everyone's always together. And, and that in this industry is unique. Trust me. So, Joe, what do you think is your favorite time of year up here? The two favorite times of year I have, actually, is fireplace time, <laughs> where the fireplace comes on and warms the building up. And then when the patio is open, when all the new guests are shocked at how big it is now, it's been expanded, and they can bring their animals out there, mostly dogs, but there's been a few other cats and the rabbit dogs. ones. <laughs> oh, the ducks are across the street. Yeah. But those are my very two favorite times of the year, patio open and the fireplace on. Hey, very yeah. comfortable. <laughs> and we were asked if we could come up with a family-friendly joke, so I'm not really sure if we're, <laughs> we're safe with you, Sheila, but let's give it a shot. I'm going for a restaurant one today because I like to cook, so um, why is the mushroom always invited to the pizza parties? Why? why? Oh, because he's such a fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. 
okay, pretty calm one. Yeah. That's all right. Well, ladies, why don't we get together a lunch and we'll join back here in a couple of minutes and okay. I'm going to show the rest of the place around. Okay. okay. All right. So the Riverside Inn is actually 100 years this year. The building is. It was built as an inn originally. Uh, there was a mill across the river there, and it was built for the mill workers. So the building, with some changes, has been here for 100 years. You can tell because when you walk up and down the floors, down and back up, everything's a little bit wonky, but that's how we like it. It's been a central part of this community forever, and the longevity of it is something we're really proud of. The fact that grandparents are bringing their grandchildren here, the fact that they tell us, you know, seven-year-old people come in and say, oh my God, I remember coming here as a child and it was a soda shop and this bar was this big long horseshoe and they had the old soda fountains and ice creams. And it, it, it's really amazing to hear those stories. We talked to one gentleman who actually grew up here. His parents owned it from 1951 to 66 and he could describe everything in the space. And it was really amazing and that's what we really love about it. We're just so proud to be a part of it. And that's one of the reasons when we first got here, I joined the Chamber of Commerce. It was really important to me to continue that small town. I grew up in a small town myself in further northern Ontario, and both my father and my, both my grandfathers own small town businesses. And we know how important it is to support each other. We support the other restaurants. When the Rockcliffe has karaoke night, we're there singing the loudest. And when M's Bake Shop is doing cookies, we're there getting them. So we want to make sure that we take care of everybody because that's how it works. The Chamber's been really instrumental in making sure the community continues to thrive. One of the things I'm proudest of is, and it was before me, they raised money and took on project management of a wellness center in Kovaconk, which in a small rural community is, is so needed. And they work so hard and are so tireless in making sure that our community keeps to thriving. It just they keep the place ticking along and we're just really happy to be part of such a thriving community where people care about each other. I know everybody at the grocery store, I know everyone at the LCBO, I'm not just from personal use, and I know 80% of our guests when they come through, I know what they like, we talk about their lives and they tell us stories and we just generally have a really great time here. Thank you for joining us on, You're welcome. on your days off, yeah. as usual, we <laughs> appreciate it and grab some lunch. So we were talking earlier about the space and what our favorite things are. So what's your favorite part about living in Norland? Like what's the thing that makes this, we've all been here for a while, well, you've all been here for a long time. What makes it so wonderful? Uh, I would say the people. Okay. Yeah. Who? Is it me? Yes, of course. It's all about you, yeah. But it is like our customers because even we're such a small town, you get to know them, and then and but they come from all over. They come from Minden, Lindsay, Peterborough, where you Great. Yeah. Yeah. My right. favorite part, well, when I first got here, anyways, my favorite part was the fact that we have a, our own lazy river. Yes. Which yes. Nancy introduced us to. So if we drive two kilometers up the road here to Elliott Falls, you take your floaties, and you just jump in the water, and it takes about two and a half hours, yeah. mm -hmm. and it comes right down here and lands on the dock right in front of us. So we do that. As a team, pretty often. The last time was a bit of a disaster. I hurt myself, <laughs> <laughs> but it's wonderful. And just just having that much what nature around us, like all of the lakes, it's crazy. Oh, I'm still learning the lakes because everyone's like, "Oh, I live on Canisius. I live on oh, Head." Yeah. You'll never learn them all. You'll never learn no. them all. But uh, you know, little Bob, big Bob, having <laughs> <laughs> like, all yeah. that space to get to is is pretty amazing. What about you, Joe? You've been here for what, 27 years? 27 now? years waitressed around here for literally 27 years. Wow. <laughs> yeah, a long time. And this is the best spot I've ever been in. But that's why it lasted so long. That's why I keep going here. Yeah, this is why I'm still back. here. Yeah. 27 years. But it's like, it's so pretty around here. It's so gorgeous. And it's yeah. just, it's away from traffic stuff and you know and it's a pass by area except where, in the summer except yeah. in the summer yeah. it gets a little busy on Sundays in front but that's always a good thing yeah actually Joe and Sheila both walk to well Sheila could walk to work she doesn't but Joe does oh, yeah. walk to work <laughs> yeah. 15 minutes down the highway yeah or ride a bike two and a half and blocks in about what 10 blocks yep Nancy's yeah, like 15 and minutes. And I'm about, no, about seven minutes. Two seven in Coca yep. Yeah. The Norland Coca Conca are, you know, just one big mm -hmm. happy family mm -hmm. with a couple lakes in between us, essentially. Yeah. The lake. But she, she actually grew up here. She was, well, a teenager yeah, when she moved up. 12. 
when I came so out here. So she did elementary school here in high school? Yeah, and, and I just, it's just, like, it's nice, all like, you, the people are all nice, you get to meet different people all the time, all the uh -huh. people always come here. And when I first started here, I worked at the gas station in Cobalconk, which is down now, but when I was 14, and then I started working in a restaurant, and now I ended up here in a lot of, <laughs> my favorite job I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Best job ever. Best the job best team ever. ever. Mm -hmm. We hope you'll come join us soon. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Pizza cheers. Pizza cheers. Pizza cheers. cheers. Mm -hmm. Hey there, my name is Sarah, and I want to take you for a spin through my world. He is probably one of the most flashy creatures we have here at Browning Reptiles. Meet Yoda. Yoda is a panther chameleon. The panther chameleon is only one of over 200 species of chameleons in the world. His native country is Madagascar. They inhabit the eastern and northern tropical forests. One of the most distinctive features this amazing animal has is their almost cartoon-like colors. Contrary to popular beliefs, chameleons do not change color to blend in with their surroundings. Rather, they change color to tell you how they're feeling, their emotions, like whether they're happy, sad, or even mad and angry. Yoda here, when he gets angry, he flares up with beautiful orange and red colors. Now, what color the chameleon can change completely depends on where they come from in the world. This little guy comes from the tropical forests. And in the tropical forests, there is a wide spectrum of different colored flora, ranging from different reds, orange, yellows, turquoise, blues, even purple. Now, if his colors weren't enough for you, he has one of the most amazing tongues I've ever seen. Check this out. Pretty remarkable, right? His tongue works a lot like an elastic band, or kind of like this fidget toy that I have here. They're called monkey noodles. And what he does is he will actually flex the muscle at the base of his tongue, and he shoots it out over one and a half times his body length. That is crazy. Think about this. You shooting your tongue out over one and a half times your height? Uh, uh-uh. Another species of chameleon we have here at Browning Reptiles is the Veiled Chameleon. This Veiled Chameleon's name is Clyde, just like a kaleidoscope. The Veiled Chameleon is native to Saudi Arabia. And what you'll notice about this species of chameleons are his colors. He is not going to change different colors of blue, pink, or purple. He's going to stay these different shades of green, brown, grays, black, yellow, orange, kind of more of a natural color. And the reason is that these are the natural colors of his habitat in Saudi Arabia. So he does technically camouflage with his surroundings, but his intensity and pattern of color is going to change depending on how he feels. The other feature you're going to notice about the veiled chameleon is this really cool mohawk he has on the top of his head. This is called a cask. And the cask serves two purposes for this, this species. It helps him collect and drink water by collecting raindrops or drops from tree leaves. And those drops will roll down that cask, down his nose and into his mouth but it also stores fat and water. And inside there, he can store energy 
in case he had to go a long time without food or water. Kind of like a camel stores fat and water in their hump on their back. These eyes they have are absolutely incredible. And they're meant to mimic tree knots. Their two massive toes they have help them grip tree branches. Where you're going to find them majority of the time is high up in the trees. Check them out just scoping everybody out. Those eyes looking in two different directions at the same time. Clyde, you are pretty cool, buddy. Yoda and all of the other critters that we have here at Browning Reptiles, we love them so much. But being an exotic animal keeper is not easy. We have to make sure that we are on top of all of the requirements that these animals need in order to thrive in captivity. If you are thinking about becoming an exotic animal keeper yourself, please do the research, educate yourself, join social groups, reach out to other keepers like myself, ask the questions, and make sure that this is something that you want to add to your family, add to your lifestyle. Over 60% of the animals here at Browning Reptiles are probably rescues and surrenders. So make sure that you're ready. I cannot thank you enough for joining me today, allowing me to share Browning Reptiles with you all, and I really hope to see you all again soon. Bye! everyone, this is Annie from the Kortha Art Gallery. I'm going to be showing you how to make two things, a CD hovercraft and liquid fireworks. With our first one about physics and our second one about chemistry, I think it's a good ending to the week. With that, let's get started on our CD hovercraft. This project will use the power of physics, specifically Newton's third law, this guy right here, to create a balloon powered hovercraft. You will need an unused or old DVD, a water bottle top and make sure it's one of those tops that you can pull up and down. You can usually find them in a pharmacy or something. A balloon. And a hot glue gun. You're going to want to glue the bottom of the sports drink cap to the shiny side of the CD and make sure that the hole in the cap and the CD are aligned so that the air can escape out of it. And then we're just going to hot glue it on. And yes, I know my hot glue gun, it looks terrible. It's like 10 years old or something, but it still works, so. And just make sure all of the glue is covering any possible holes for the air to escape. See, I have it completely covered around, as you can see at the bottom, so that nothing can escape. Now you're going to want to blow up your balloon. Here is me doing exactly that as I stare at you. Now you're going to want to twist the end of the balloon a bit just to prevent any air from escaping while you are using the end to hook it over the cap. And just like that, when we open the cap, like that, we have our hovercraft. See, it's quite fun just to play around with it. It kind of reminds me of um, air hockey, you know, those air hockey tables. And once it runs out or stops being interesting, then you just re-blow up the balloon and then stick it over again. And there may be skeptics out there who think, well, your table probably is just smooth, so the CD would have slid anyway. No, here is a comparison. Now that we have our CD hovercraft made, let's ask ourselves, how does this work? 
Well, Newton's third law states that with every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if you were to punch a wall, your hand is going to really hurt. And that's because the strength you use to hit the wall is coming right back at you. So with our CD hovercraft, the air from the balloon is pushing into the table, which is then causing an upward force on our CD. But you can't just expect to tie balloons to your feet and fly. The fact that our CD is flat allows for the air to escape in all directions, which also helps keep it afloat. Now that our hovercraft has been created, let's close off our event with some celebratory fireworks. You will need... Warm water in a jar, which I've filled to about two-thirds full. Three to four tablespoons of oil, and I'm using canola oil. And you also need a shallow dish or a bowl or something like that to put the oil into and various food coloring, because that's going to be our fireworks. And also a popsicle stick to mix. So to start, I'm going to be measuring three tablespoons of oil, and I'm going to be pouring it into this shallow plate. Okay, never mind, four tablespoons of oil <laughs> I used here. And then you're going to want to take your food coloring and just drop it around because as you can see it doesn't dissolve in the oil so you can just drop it wherever as long as it's spread out. Now you're going to want to take your popsicle stick and just mix it around, or mix it as best you can because clearly as you can see it's not really fully mixing, it's just making the drops a bit smaller. And also I'm just trying to break it up because a lot of the food coloring sort of stuck to the bottom and you don't want that happening. Now for the fun part, we just pour it right into the jar. As you can see, all the oil is floating to the top. And you're just going to want to wait for a little bit. At first, I was confused, but if you wait a little bit, you can start to see, look, isn't that cool? All of the food coloring is beginning to settle down, and it makes it look like liquid fireworks. It's quite hypnotizing to stare at <laughs> if you just keep looking at it. Now that we've made some fireworks, let's ask ourselves, how did this happen? Food coloring, which you probably already know, dissolves in water, but not in oil. Because the oil is less dense than the water, which means it's less heavy, it will float at the top. The colored droplets will begin to sink because they're heavier than the oil. So once they sink into the water, they begin dissolving into it, which makes it look so cool. And remember, kids and parents, if you did this experiment, then take a quick picture of it, email it to this email address, along with the child's name, age, and title of the video, and we will post it to the Kortha Art Gallery website and social media so that you can see your own projects featured online. Did you know it can be easy to have the information all at your fingertips that makes life so much easier, like when your waste collection takes place after a long weekend, when you can register for a recreational program, or how to follow council's decisions just about your community. How do you get dialed in? It's easy. Subscribe to the city's e-news and get the content you want delivered right to your inbox. Choose only the topics you're interested in. If you'd rather follow us on social media where the news is posted as it happens, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for live streaming of all our council meetings. And if you want to keep it really simple, just go to the website. The homepage will link you to the recent news, community events calendar, and much more. And on the top of our website, we want to hear from you. Can you find what you're looking for? What sections do you refer to regularly? 
what can be added to make it more effective for you. Go to the Jump In project called Did You Know? Because we want to know. Thank you.